then Jerry came out, and Jerry came in there with that, that third finger. And Jerry would do things... Um, like uh, the claw. He's got to make sure he's in focus for the claw. <laughs> song in a minute. And so I learned all of those different styles and I, I found that you can put them all together and that's where a sort of a composite of me comes from. And so you can hear the different styles. I just play one song through the first time like Merle, second time like Chet, third time like Jerry. And then you can sort of see the essence of what I, where I came from. It's a little Merle Travis. You got them fingers real tight? Yeah. Because I know you ain't getting my face. <laughs> <laughs> Guitar, I mean. <laughs> no questions. Yes, sir. Uh, I just don't hear very well. Oh, I'll yell at you. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I'm used to that. But uh, you said you quit playing about 15 or 16 before the dad passed away. Yeah, somewhere around there, 16, 17. Yeah, when, when did you start back playing? Seriously. Well, I reckon I was almost 30. Wow. That's Something man. like that. Going up on 30. I mean, I would take it out now and then. I actually even played a couple of gigs where I went out and tried to remember playing at a little coffee shop or something. And it would bother me, and then I wouldn't, I wouldn't play again for a long time. And my first wife didn't like it anyway, so. <laughs> That's why the word ex and wife go together so well. What is something about their first wife? Yeah. It never works. You do a great job. Thank you, sir. What about your brothers? He used to come.
Oh yeah, he's another one of them wild ones. That's why my technique is so weird, is because I watched him play the the thumb part like that and the melody with two fingers. And you know, when, when I was a little kid, you know, I mean, I was uh, easy manipulated or whatever and influenced. I thought that's the way he's supposed to do it, even when the strings were on the wrong side. And I started off playing, you know, like this and doing G. <laughs> When I was in France, they tried to screw me up one night. They had a, a jam session, and they brought me a guitar with strings on backwards. And I played the whole set. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I've been seeing that my whole life. You know? <laughs> they thought they were going to screw me up. They said, Cannonball Rag. I said, all right, boys, backwards it's this. <laughs> But that ruined their joke. <laughs> uh, he didn't make it this year. I hope he, he makes it maybe next time or something. Yeah, I'd love to see that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's the only time, my only time of year I get to see him is here, and so we can, I guess I'll go another year. And... Oh, yeah, well, Don Jones is Don. I don't know if he's in here. He's a hell of a player, but does the same thing. Yeah. Real fine player. Yeah. Huh? Well, yeah, that's another one that you got to have sort of a band, but it's uh. That's really about it. You know, you just throw that reed pattern on there. I don't think Amos Moses is in there. It might be. I don't know. It's been a long time ago since. It's in the back of the book. Well, I'd say if anybody knows it, no for no, Paul does. You know. Yeah, he's got a bunch of It's like asking me about breast tunes. You know, I toured with the guy. I stole everything you know. Just don't tell him that. I was hoping he'd stop by uh, so we could talk about, you know, playing together. A lot of the guys here are... Uh, and I hate to sound like a critic or, or an odal or anything like that, but uh, a lot of the guys here, when they get together, they play music at each other. They're not playing together. And it's a different thing, you know. It's not a competition, you know. When you play with somebody, you know, giving each guy a little latitude and then coming together, you can really create something that's more than either one of you alone. And uh, that's what the boss and I do is uh, when we play together, I play to, to try and compliment what he's doing in spots, and he compliments me, and then we give each other some space. And then when we, when we come together at the end result, it's bigger and stronger and more powerful than either one of us alone. And uh, unfortunately, I, I walk around at night and I watch the young players and, and they're playing at e each other as opposed to uh, playing with each other. And a lot of that's adolescence, I'm sure. You know, that's just, you got to get over trying to be the greatest guitar player in the world and it ain't going to happen. You know, there's just too many brilliant players. I'm blessed just to get to know them and shake their hands and pick with them. I was nervous only one time in my life on stage, and that was the first time I did a sit-down show when I was 13. Well, don't get me wrong, people make me nervous. I mean, I was more nervous to sit with Chet and have a beer with him. I couldn't talk. He asked me a question, and I couldn't say anything, so I, asked, I told him a dirty joke. <laughs> I never did answer his question. Well, it turns out he loved him, and he had to write it down because he'd never heard that one. <laughs> but when I was 13, I, I played at the auditorium at school and uh, played Cannonball, and um, I can't remember what the other thing was right offhand. But the first song I played, I think, was Cannonball Rag, and I played my brother's Gretsch, which was too big for me, you know. And I was so scared. Uh, because uh, everybody was just looking at you. Not like the hay wagon shows where they're going over and getting a pint or whatever and eating chicken and barbecue and stuff. And so I, I threw the guitar in the case, man, and I ran down the hallway to the backstage bathroom because I had to pee so bad, all them people. And the guy came back and pulled on me and said, you got to go back up and play another song. I said, no, you told me everybody played one song. 
And he said, well, you got a standing ovation, son. And, I, and I'd never been to a sit-down audience before. I thought they were supposed to stand up for everybody. I'd never been to one. <laughs> never been to one. And when I went back out the second time, I wasn't scared no more. And, I, and that, was, that was the end of it. I've noticed Mark was confident. Mark was never, I don't think, ever intimidated. Maybe humble. But he would get right in there and he was growing, you know. That's the way to learn. Get right in there. And what's to be afraid of? That's it. If you screw up, you're a human. Right. You know, um, just some keep people, on getting it. Some people do that and some can't. I'm, I'm the type of guy that sits back. <laughs> Uh, my wife says, oh, I get all, I said, Buster gets all full of them. Said, get up there and start telling stories and whatnot. I've had some pretty funny things happen since I started playing this thing for a living. I tell you, every day is an adventure on the road. <laughs> Boy, you were really tall. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Yes, sir. Well, wild turkeys never failed me. Are you asking me to play? Would you play? Yeah, well, I'm fixing to play back here at the big show. I hope you all come to that. Yeah, I'll rip it off for you. Let's see. doing a show and Chet was there and uh, Larry Coriel and uh, Albert Lee and a bunch of other guys, Burley Legrini. And I got up and I burnt one up on this and some guy out of the audience, I was, was a different song than this, but uh, he says, hey, what tuning was that? And I was so impressed with his English because I hadn't heard anybody speak English in four days, you know. And, uh, and now I know what deaf people feel like. I, and I mean this <laughs> literally, you can sit in a room like this and can't understand a damn thing that anybody says it's just all oral audio spaghetti. Yeah. And so you just sort of sit there. <laughs> and you don't you don't do anything and it's, it's freaky, but this guy said, hey what tuning is it? And I said, hell I don't know. I said, you take this one and tune it down until it sounds real good. You take this one and tune it down until it sounds real good. <laughs> Leave the other ones alone except for this one and crank it down a little bit. And when it sounds real good you there. <laughs> I walked off the stage and Chet's over there going like this. <laughs> and when Chet goes like this, E.F. Hutton will come running. I mean, you know. So I got over there and I said, yeah. And he said, now listen, that's a G tune. You all to yourself get educated. You sound stupid out there. People don't think you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> he, he has a way with words. This one I made up for Jerry Reed. I, I wrote it one night. I got tired of playing Black Mountain Rag. I decided I want to do something different. So this was the end of the results called Wild Turkey.
who's going to lie? <laughs> Have a thumb pick. Anybody wants a thumb pick? If you want a CD or something, we got them right over here. Just They're not free, though. you got to type them up. froze in on the train out in the country, and uh, it was terrible. And all of this snow and everything got me thinking about a Christmas carol, and I had bought a book, and I can't read the music, but it had a tape, which is what I bought it for, and it had this pretty little Christmas carol in it. I gotta show you this. This guy was teaching a Christmas carol like this. so much I was going to write a song to go around that so I didn't have to wait for Christmas to come around and to play that. <laughs> and I came up with this little ditty.
wife told me that sounded Hawaiian, so I, I wrote that one. Uh, I think I'm going to call it Cyril for the big boy in the back there. <laughs> shoes than I used to, <laughs> and a nicer hat, but in that, about the same. I still go to bed about 5.30 at 6 o'clock in the morning, and I get up at the crack of noon every day. <laughs> but I was sitting out there one morning, <clears throat> and I was looking at the, we live out in the country over a mountain range, watching the hawks fly, and it reminded me of when my daddy used to come in when we were little kids, and we had a night light, you know. And he would do little hand things in front of that light. And he would make things happen on the wall. I know you don't want to hear that pretty stuff from me. So now I'll get ugly. Marcel Dadi was a good friend of mine, and uh, we used to swap licks back and forth and everything. I still look pretty well kept, don't I? I mean,
I'm gonna sing at you. <laughs> I'm just giving you fair warning. But if you leave, it costs you five dollars when you go out that door. I ain't no dummy. I gotta go over to <clears throat> check him over to Tom's house one day. And he's sitting there. So let me sing that good Tom. That's one of them go dads. Well, I sure like that thing. Plays nice. Let me show you something. He said, "Now watch this. It's real clever." You know, it's even worse than going to sing like Chet. <laughs> Thank you. 